Hi, I'm Steve Sample with Bama Talk. Don't miss a single episode of Bama Talk Show available now on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app and on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com. This is the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Monday, 17th of December. I'm James Spann. Got a couple of storm systems on the way to focus on now. Now that we've got the one from last night out of here, we have one Thursday of this week and another one maybe Christmas Day. Okay, let's go in there and talk about it. Uh, we'll check some of the Skycam shots around the network. First off this afternoon, that's coming from Chihaw State Park in East Alabama, Alabama's highest mountain. The sky there is cloudy. We'll check the Parish Sky Cam in Walker County, though, on the uh, western side of the state, the sky beginning to clear. I get the idea it's going to be a really nice sunset this evening. And there's the Sky Cam coming from Hamilton High School in Marion County, where they, too, have rays of sun. Nice presentation there of the visible satellite imagery. There's the clearing over northwest Alabama. That will work its way south. Everybody should be clear late tonight and cooler. And the storms are way east of here. Tornado watch boxes now for parts of coastal South Carolina, down through South Georgia and North Florida. Those storms are uh, moving on to the east, headed toward uh, Jacksonville and uh, Lake City. Temperatures this afternoon, mostly low 60s, not very far above average. We should be in the upper 50s this time of the year. And around the nation, turning colder up north, where they've got uh, readings uh, below freezing this afternoon over parts of Wisconsin and Minnesota. But the bulk of that really cold air will stay north of us uh, this time. Again, there's the uh, watch box, at least one of them, for parts of Florida and Georgia until 9 o'clock Eastern time tonight. And there's the convective outlook for the rest of today and tonight. A slight risk along that squall line from near uh, Tallahassee up to uh, around Cape Fear and Wilmington. Also a slight risk for Nashville and Louisville and Lexington because of storms up there under the cold uh, trough that could produce some hail. And again, this is the next storm system to focus on. This is day three, which is Wednesday. We have a severe weather risk to the west, the standard slight risk for most of Arkansas, much of North Louisiana, and about the western half of Mississippi. And we'll needless to say be watching that batch of storms as it moves on to the west, east, possibly affecting us by uh, uh, after midnight, Wednesday night, early Thursday. We'll focus on that in the modeling here in just a bit. This is the rain for the next five days, valid through Saturday evening at 6 o'clock, suggesting rain amounts of about one-half to three-quarters of an inch with our system on Thursday. All right, here we go. The GFS, the 12Z run, valid at noon tomorrow at 500 millibars. Trough axis on to the east. And down below that, the day will be sunny and cooler. Uh, temperatures will peak probably around 60 tomorrow. The uh, NAM is at 59. The GFS at 51. We'll start the day around 40. Now, Wednesday... Uh, I, the day looks good, uh, partly to mostly sunny. We should be warmer, high getting up into the upper 60s. But it's going to take a while for the moisture to get in here. No chance of rain at all Wednesday. You can see our new storm, though, off to the west. Maybe a big snow for Denver. Be aware of that if you're traveling out there Wednesday. A 994 millibar low around Gage, Oklahoma. And then Thursday, there's your big trough rolling on in here. But notice, again, the main energy a little north of here. The better uh, upward velocities with that uh, vorticity advection. And down below that, the surface low, very deep, 982 millibars. That is just northeast of Chicago. Maybe a big snow there for much of Wisconsin. Trailing front with the storms basically ending at noon. This will be a quick in and quick out kind of thing. It still looks like the main window for storms about 3 a.m. until noon Thursday. Let's look at some of the instability stuff. This is uh, coming off the NAM. This is valid at noon on Thursday, and it has a little tongue of instability coming up. This is more aggressive than the GFS, uh, and these are lifted indices. Uh, anything is green, that's unstable air, and uh, you can see that that little tongue comes up in here. So this run a little more aggressive with instabilities, but again, with this thing coming through during the early morning hours, that might lessen the chance of a major severe weather problem. This is the uh, bulk shear in the lower levels, surface to 925 millibars, 30 knots of shear. And this is valid uh, early Thursday morning. I'm sorry, this is actually at, uh, let's see, 9 a.m. Thursday morning. So the shear values are very good. The instability is very marginal. Typical cold weather setup here. And this is the EHI, the Energy Helicity Index. And 
Uh, again, you can see values uh, that are close to one near Montgomery. You want to see those in excess of one, uh, you know, for you know really significant severe weather problems. So uh, it's going to be a tough call, but I think we'll have to watch for strong storms, and they could be severe. I think it's going to be a squall line. The main threat would be from strong straight line winds. But again, as we get closer, we'll refine that. But again, in terms of timing, I'd say probably 3 a.m. until noon on Thursday. And by the way, there's the precipitable water. And uh, those numbers are pretty high, but the squall line is going to be moving in a very rapid clip. And so I think that uh, deal where the rain amounts of one-half to three-quarters of an inch sounds about right. All right, Friday, uh, cold air advection. It's going to be colder. We will have a hard time getting out of the 40s despite the return of sun. We'll start the day Friday around the freezing mark, so a cold and dry day on Friday. Saturday morning, another freeze is likely. 20s are a good possibility. Uh, the high Saturday should be in the uh, mid-50s, and that's below average for this time of the year. And then Sunday, again, uh, temperatures right where they ought to be. Upper 50s during the day. We'll start the day low to mid-30s, something like that. All right, Christmas fans, let's take a look at next week. This is Christmas Eve, December 24th at noon. Big trough in the southwest. Down below that, moisture starts to come back, and this is suggesting we might want to mention some risk of showers, scattered showers on Monday now. I uh, don't think it'll be a big deal. And then on Christmas Day, ooh, boy, look at this mess coming at us. Uh, the GFS is depicting a 1,004 millibar low that's uh, north of Longview, Texas, with uh, rain and strong storms here in the warm sector and a whopper of a snow event out there for the High Plains states. And on the 26th, yikes. Uh, if this verifies, this is valid uh, local time at 6 o'clock uh, that evening, the 26th of December, Surface load near Cape Girardeau, Missouri, with a major rain, severe weather episode here. Like, we really need that the day after Christmas. Now, let's look at the European version. This is Christmas Day. Oh, boy. The, the European is faster. Uh, this is Tuesday of next week. It's got a uh, 1,000 millibar low over Arkansas with potential for severe weather here. And look at the cold air diving into Texas. Uh, this would suggest a snow event on Christmas Day for Dallas, Fort Worth, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Kansas City, and St. Louis. And it may be a big one for some of those cities, especially like Tulsa and Kansas City. Wow. And look at this on the 27th of December. The European has the 540 line in the Gulf. That is very cold. I mean, really cold. And we've seen the models suggesting that. So the latest looks from really both the GFS and the European show potential for strong to severe storms, either Christmas Day or the day after, and then a big change to cold weather. So strap in for that. Just for the fun of it, I thought I'd check the GFS potential snow cover Christmas morning. Uh, and again, uh, that's about where you expect to see snow on the ground. Now, odds of a white Christmas here, it's not going to happen. It might be a stormy Christmas for us this year. But we had one two years ago, you know. All right, let's go out there a little deeper. This is the first, I'm sorry, the 2nd of January. Goodness, 2013. And uh, it's got a very fast flow here and a cold air in place, uh, if this happens to be uh, correct, with a, a 1036 high over Arkansas. So, but again, this is out there in the land of voodoo, and we all know that could change. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this afternoon. Notes on the blog, of course, alabamawx.com. If you can, watch us on ABC 3340 News on the live stream or the television side at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless. Does your weatherman have a face for radio? ABC 3340's James Spann may be hair challenged, but he sure is entertaining, especially when he teams up with everyone's favorite radio duo, Rick and Bubba. From the radio airwaves to the small screen, it's the Rick and Bubba TV show five days a week. Watch Rick and Bubba along with ABC 3340 chief meteorologist James Spann, Monday through Friday from 6 to 10 a.m. on the Nashville Network, provided by ABC 3340.